Well, welcome back to another Shifting Schools episode. I'm so excited that Trish and I are going to take a little time today to do another off the cuff where uh, it's just the two of us kind of catching up and reflecting on things that have been happening over at Shifting Schools and uh, in our consulting world. Actually, Trisha, we didn't even talk about that, but I think that'd be really good. Do you want to fill people in? By the way, hi, Hi, Trisha. For the audio people, they probably need to know you're here. Um, uh, do you want to start by just talking about what's been going on consulting wise for you? I know you've been doing some conferences and just talk about some of the stuff that you've been doing in your consulting life. Uh, well, you know, I've been I'm marrying these two passions of mine. It's been really great. Like I love teaching creative writing. I, you know, that was always something that I absolutely love doing. So I had the joy and privilege of working with a group of creative writing teachers who were interested in this idea of using AI generated art to fuel creative writing. Um, And we were, again, you know, Jeff, you and I talk so much about prompt craft, how a truly powerful prompt is much different than, hey, Chachi PT, can you give me five ideas for? But when you're really, really specific and when you're using an AI art generator, that really comes through, right? Like the more specific you can be, the more, um, you know, you really dig into your descriptive vocabulary words, tone, mood, all of those things, um, you are literally seeing the difference in the prompt that you're getting. So been doing some some work with that. Also looking at what AI art is going to mean for the business world. So how does it also help you think about marketing a new concept, about advertising, about coming up with a slogan? So um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping actually that we get more interest in that because sometimes, Jeff, I hear mm. people say, oh my goodness, you know, um, these AI art generators are going to rob students of creative thinking. It's the opposite, folks. This is a trampoline for creativity if you're thinking about how to use it. So um, that's been uh, a real passion of mine lately. And and I know that you've been all over the map. Um, How are things going for you in your world of uh, navigating this journey of AI and working with educators? Yeah, it's been great. And I want to, uh, before I talk about my stuff, you need to go check out Trisha's uh, stuff over on LinkedIn (laughs) and we'll make sure there's a a link uh, to uh, in the show notes because the thing you did around the toothpaste brand was incredible. I mean, that was, I, people need to see what you were able to do. Um, and your post over on LinkedIn is fantastic. I shared it as well. Uh, but it's worth people looking at the art that you're getting into with mid journey and stuff. And uh, it literally gave me chills. So I'm excited about that. Um, yeah. So check out Trisha on LinkedIn and make sure you read that post because it's a pretty cool one on, on things you're doing with uh, just launching new brands and, and what that's going to oh, mean for even in the business. I, world I appreciate well. that. Thanks. Jeff. Uh, for me. Yeah. I mean, the things, yeah, no worries. Um, things keep, you know, as we know, are blowing up with um, with AI and just trying to support schools and districts uh, where we're at. I just got back from Kansas City. A shout out to the Kansas City, Missouri Superintendents Leadership Forum, uh, where I got to spend an hour and a half or so with um, superintendents from both states coming together to talk about and think about what does AI mean for them? What does AI mean uh, for our students? And, you know, Trisha, I think the thing that's really I, I'm loving, and I know you're going to love this too, is how school leaders are really embracing that opening up AI and using things like ChatGPT with students and teaching kids how to use AI is an equity conversation, not a technology conversation. And I know we've said that a lot here on the podcast, but it's so great when I get done doing a presentation and the feedback is, I can see this being an equity issue. I can see this being an equity issue. And that just makes me so happy that we are now looking at technology, not for technology, but understanding that every child, 
across the world and you know especially in Canada, Australia, America, like these rich western countries these kids need to have these skills. They need to be thinking about how are we leveraging how are we leveraging this technology to make the world a better place and support you know countries and communities that might not have access to this. What does that mean for the next level? And I just I love that we're coming at it from an equity lens. And I know you've been doing some work around some ideas around that as well. Yeah, you know, I think sometimes and you know, I want to just say full stop, we've got to be aware, of course, of the balance, you know, are AI harms and AI balance real? Yes, they are. But, you know, Jeff, I actually, I'm just going to shout out another podcast I host, the Unhinged Collaboration Podcast. We recently interviewed Dr. Sue Lynn Blodgett, who is a researcher with Microsoft out of Montreal. And she was saying AI literacy has to be for everyone because we're going to need everybody advocating for more fair, just AI systems. And, yep. you know, it is, it's going to be those that are playing around with the technology that understands both the ways that it can be used for good and the ways that it can be used um, in, in harmful ways. And I think this is true of all technology, right? So I think if you are right. saying, my head is in the sand, I'm not going to pay attention. And I am also not going to have my students learn about this. You're doing them a disservice because, you know, AI is not just... Um, an academic integrity issue. You know, we saw in the That's news right. this week, Google has partnered with some hospitals in the U.S. to make the healthcare industry, uh, you know, a little bit easier. A lot of doctors and nurses yeah. talk about the administrative work and how that drains them of time and energy and what can AI do to speed that up. Um, but chatbots actually have also been used for good. You know, Red Cross has a disaster relief chatbot. So if I'm in an area and unfortunately there's just been a disaster, there's a chatbot there that's meant to help get folks information really quickly um, in a trying time. So I, I think it's important to learn about the ways in which this technology can be used in really transformative ways. I'll just say one more thing about that. Um, if you're thinking, I don't get it, what is Trisha talking about? How can AI be used for good? This is what I want you to do. Google this one thing. It's called Be My Eyes. And this is technology mm. that's been um, open AI has actually, um, Be My Eyes was, was an app before for folks who are blind or vision impaired. And open AI said, we'd love to partner with you. And the original app said, but this is free. We want to keep this free. Open AI said, yes, we will make that happen. Um, essentially, if I am blind, I can take a picture of the inside of my refrigerator the app is going to describe it back to me. And now because it's got AI, I can also engage with it further and say, okay, this is the contents of my fridge. Can you give me some ideas for what I can cook for dinner? So be my eyes, Google that, you know, start thinking about the ways in which this technology is life changing, life changing. Yeah, it's so true. It's so true. And you know, the, the, I read that article as well. We'll make sure we link it in the show notes where Google is, is partnering with, you know, the healthcare system. And when I was reading that article, I'm, I was saying to myself, you know, this is, this makes sense because in our trainings, I will have a usually special ed teacher that, that comes and says, does this thing fill out IEP forms? And I'm like, yes, actually it will. It knows IEPs. It will, if you give it the right criteria, it will help and support you in filling out IEP forms. And I think of that same type of idea that we see in education can be used in administration. Like here's an intake form or here we need a follow up. And this thing can fill out the forms if it's got the information and be able to pull that data. Uh, and, and just interesting what some of the results are going to be. So I, it's, it's so early in the early days of AI and we're already seeing some incredible, incredible uses, uh, with it. And I think that to me is, is just what excites me. And the idea again, that we in education are seeing this as an equity play and we in education are starting to under, and are, we're having the conversation. And I think more than anything, I tell every educator, I'm so excited that Unlike social media, where we buried our head in the sand for 10 years and then cyberbullying got out of control and we're like, oh, maybe we need to do some things with students around social media and cyberbullying. We're in the conversation and we're trying to figure out best case uses and we're trying to figure out what does this mean for education. The same time that communities and organizations and, the, and other every other industry is trying to figure it out as well. And I think to me that 
that's just so exciting. I'm so glad that education is in the conversation. And, uh, you know, it, I think going into what you were talking about is there's so many great use cases. There's so many great use cases around using uh, AI. And, you know, we've been running the cohort over at Shifting Schools. We've had two three-month cohorts that sold out. Uh, and some of the stories that are coming out of the participants that have been going through our cohort, I think are really, really cool. Do you want to start with uh, our first story? Sure. Yeah. You know, the cohort model, I think I've always been a big believer in because it's not, you know, just a one-off. We are building a community where people are sharing different ideas and you've got a range of educators, some people who are very skeptical, some people who are really excited. You've got brand new beginners. You've also got early adopters coming together and you know sharing their questions sharing their concerns uh, so i think that's kind of the ecosystem where you get really rich dialogue um and yeah. we also you know we've had a few people say i don't understand why you limit the size of your cohort and we do that because you know we we also believe in trying to customize our trainings as best as possible in that kind of setting so jeff and i are also always offering personal support we had a member of the cohort reach out to us because we also have um, a virtual community where people can be sending DMs, questions. It doesn't just have to be on the days when we're sharing things or having a webinar. There's conversation when and where people want it. So we had a participant reach out and say, hey, uh, we actually have a PD day coming up and there's this one specific unit. Um, our school is really into UDL and folks would love to know more about how generative AI can support this given unit and help us better understand UDL. And I was like, well, do you want a few resources? And the participant went, you can do that. And I said, that's the exact point of the cohort, right? <laughs> that's, right. that's why we do have it limited. So, you know, if we had 3000 people, no, we couldn't offer that, but we've got a nice cozy group. Um, you know, again, yeah. the, the participant was really grateful for that. But I said, you know, you don't have to say thank you. Literally, this is what the cohort is for. So, um, you know, yeah. again, we survey participants as they're coming in to learn a little bit more about their context. And every single week, we're also saying, like, what else do you need? What are you working on? What's coming up? Yeah. And we, I mean, you, I mean, this is our full-time jobs. We love supporting educators, just like we used to love supporting kids in our classroom, right? Uh, that when we set up cohorts like this and over at camp.shiftingschools.com, uh, you can go there and join our little community and we are here to help and support you. Like uh, you can direct message us. You can go into a forum. You know, we had a professor from down in Portland say, Hey, I get, am creating this class. Here are the outcomes. What would you cover? And I love that, that everybody's saying, well, this is what I would do for pre-service teachers. You know, I mean, just this idea around it. Uh, the, the, I love it. Uh, uh, one of the other stories I wanted to share was, and I think this to me is, this story is exactly why I love AI and supporting teachers and doing AI. Uh, this story comes from a culinary teacher uh, who is, who's in the culinary arts. And as you probably can guess in these CTE programs, there's only one culinary teacher in a high school. You don't have a PLC. You don't have three other teachers to support you in creating fun and engaging lesson plans all the time. And like, you can only know what's in your head. And so trying to get outside your head, and I love this because over at camp, uh, at camp shifting schools, she talks about how she wanted to bounce ideas off of, uh, this new topic lesson unit idea. She had around five mother sauces. Uh, and if you're not into culinary arts, you might want to go to chat GBT and ask it what the five culinary, uh, sauces are mother sauces are, but I love this. This is her prompt. And I want you to think about this because this is so great. I want to read the prompt because she shared it over here. She asked chat GBT to quote, write an assignment for high school culinary that asks students to create a small poster about the five mother sauces. Make sure it tells them to break it into five sections, one for each sauce. Ask them to add a breakout box describing these vocabulary words, rokes, immensify, deglaze. Also generate a four point grading rubric that is simple and judges the quality of the description of each sauce, the look of the poster and the content being accessible to the reader. And she took the results and she tweaked them a little bit. She even shares the Google doc of what she, uh, of what it produced. And I love this. She says, um, it's literally perfect. And it took me three minutes 
In fact, it saved me so much time today that I had an opportunity to post it back to the community. And I love that. Like, you know, here's just a mind blowing moment for an educator who doesn't have somebody to bounce ideas off of, has this great idea of what they want to do and is supporting them in doing the work that they have to do anyway. And even if we just does that, even if, if, even if it just did that, what an incredible tool to be using in our classrooms, right? What an incredible tool. Uh, anyway, I just love the stories that are coming out of our cohort. Uh, again, you can go over to camp.shiftingschools.com. It's free to sign up. We've got open communities there. Uh, you can join us around the campfire. It's a whole camp theme. More over there at camp.shiftingschools.com. Uh, but just really great to see some of the stuff that's coming out of these three month cohorts that we've been running. So with that, Trisha, do you want to talk about our new offering that starts this November? I do. Yeah. As much as we would love to run uh, another three month cohort, we are coming up to winter break. Jeff, you're going to be on the road. I'm going to be on the road. Maybe we'll see some listeners out there. We would love that. Um, but we, we did have a few people saying, I still would love to have a community to experiment with. Um, and, and we really are huge advocates for if you want to understand the real power of this technology, how it can be transformative for student learning, you've got to experiment with it. So we do have a three work, three week cohort coming that's starting November 7th. It runs until November 21st. We're going to have a weekly live webinar, but if you cannot make the live webinar, you can watch the video. Every single one of our webinars that we've done with the three month cohort based on requests of participants. Jeff, I, I kind of wonder actually if you want to talk about what that exper uh, experience has been like. You know, we're, we're not, Jeff and I are not deciding this is the topic. We're reaching out to folks inside the cohort and saying, what do you want to learn about? What should we talk about this time? Well, and I think the, the thing that we both love about it is it pushes you and I to be thinking through different lenses all the time. You know, when our cohorts come to us and people are like, oh, we'd really like something around this given topic. You and I can come together, mostly you, because I've been on the road so much, but come together and say, okay, well, here's some ideas here. And then in the video or in the webinar, we have a chance to explain it, throw out ideas, uh, get feedback from the cohort even more. I just love that we're meeting the needs of educators as they need them. And we're only as good as the feedback we get, right? We're only as good as the feedback we get. And so we appreciate it anytime we get that feedback and we get to create new cool stuff. Uh, and, and it pushes both you and I to, to be thinking about that as well. And I so, think folks inside- uh, We both love the live- the live webinars. I, I, folks inside the cohort too, because you know, your example about the culinary art teacher, I had somebody else in the cohort reach out and say, you know what? I hadn't even thought about some of those non-traditional academic um, courses yeah. and how this is going to be transformative for them as well. So um, yes, we have a weekly live webinar. We also have generative AI resources. These are ready to roll resources that we create that again, the community is telling us this is what we're working on, or this is the unit I have coming up, or this is the parent caretaker night that's coming up. Uh, we build something for that. We're also going to have a weekly challenge. Um, I think anybody that has ever been working on fitness, it's so much easier if you're doing it even with one more person. So, um, yeah, right. you know, we, we have, we're going to have group challenges every single week that give you that time headspace, hopefully to experiment and the supportive group. You know, Jeff, you hit the nail on the head earlier where a big part of the cohort is also celebrating some of the small wins. So that's going to be a part of it. And again, we've got the online community when and where folks want it. So they've got questions we're there to answer them. So it's just three weeks, but it's going to be pretty action packed. Again, this is limited to 50 participants. The link to learn more is going to be over there in the show notes. We'd love to have some podcast listeners um, join this three-week cohort. Again, November 7th to the 21st. Jeff, if there's a listener and they're saying, wait a second, okay, I've got a team of 10. Do I get a little bit of a team discount? How do I, how do I find well, more? Well, of course you yeah. do. And, and how should they, yeah, of course how should they find out about the uh, 10 plus discount? What's the best way for them to find out more about that? Yes. Well, and we, we know that, I mean, you know, Trish and I, yes, we have to make money because we have to live, <laughs> you know, but we also are here to support where we can. And, you know, this again is going to be limited to 50 people. And the great, the crazy part is we've only got 40 spots left before we even got time to make the podcast and send this out to our podcast um, audience. 
But so there's about 40 spots left. And here's what we'd love. Here, here's here's our, you know, our, our pitch to you. If you can get 10 or more people from your school to sign up, it reduces the cost from $175. We give you a 50% discount on that. So that means you're basically getting a two for one deal, two teachers for every, you know, uh, a two for one deal. We'll give you a 50% discount if you get 10. And we've already got one school. That's the first 10 spots is a school that um, said, yes, we will take 10 spots. So we we love that. We love sponsoring and, and just thinking about how does this impact communities at large? I, the other thing I love, Trisha, is this is, you know, the, our last couple have been three months, you know, a lot longer, a lot more in depth, a lot more resources shared. I love that this one's just three weeks. You know, if, if you're thinking to yourself, you know what, I can't commit to three months because I'm coaching or, I, you know, my, my kids are doing volleyball or whatever it happens to be. Can you do three weeks? Can, this is just three weeks. It, it's emails in your inbox. It's coming to a webinar or watching the recording and just engage for three weeks and, and see where it takes you. Um, so it is $175. Uh, of course, if you're a podcast listener, you can save $25 by using that code SSPOD25. That's only for podcast listeners. And if you can round up nine other teachers at your school, get your school to use some PD funds, it's 50%. Um, we try to make this as easy uh, as, as possible so that we can uh, support as many schools and as many educators as possible. So uh, it's going to be a great three weeks. I'm really excited uh, to dig in with this uh, for the month of November. That is a much better deal. I wasn't even aware that it's that great of a deal. So uh, I will have the email address to reach out if you want to grab that team discount while space remains, info at shiftingschools.com. That will be in the show notes. And I should say too, yes, it's a three-week cohort, but even with some of our participants with the current cohorts, I'm still having folks reach out to me and saying, you know, I got behind, this was happening and I'm catching up on things now. So the other reality is there's a lot of flexibility in terms of, a lot um, of flexibility. You know, this is meant to be like in your time, the resources that you yep. need, the questions that you have, um, all bundled in a, a community that's been really, really supportive. It's been so refreshing to see people celebrating one another's wins because I think whenever you're facing a shift. Um, you know, we, we need that. We need to come together and, and support each other. So listeners, we'd love to have you inside of our three week cohort, November 7th through to November 21st. Yeah. And if you can't, uh, if you can't join us for the three weeks, again, if you can just head over to camp.shiftingschools.com, join our community. I would love after this episode airs, if we can get to a hundred members, we're already at 78 uh, members. So we're, we're almost to the hundred member mark. I think that would be awesome. And I'd love to have uh, some podcast uh, audience members join us over there. You also can talk about the podcast over there. We, we have a conversation about all these podcast episodes that are coming out. Um, and speaking of the podcast, Trisha, we are wrapping up our SEL series, our mini series on SEL, and we are starting a new series. You want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, well, Information Media Literacy Week kicks off October 23rd. Maybe your school is doing something for it. So we wanted to do not just one week, not just two weeks, but three weeks of conversation around information and media literacy. We have three amazing guests, each of whom points us to some great resources so that we can be exploring information and media literacy all year, doing it from an interdisciplinary stance, because I think that's the other thing is that, you know, the era of AI means that we need to get sharper, more sophisticated information literacy in our schools. Um, AI does mean that it's going to be a lot easier for mis and disinformation to be generated. So what are we doing to get students ready to be much more savvy consumers um, of information? Uh, so we're hoping, again, those three weeks, it's going to set you up to be thinking about that. Uh, again, the SEL miniseries, we got some great feedback on that. We are still working on miniseries concepts for the year 2024. So if you're thinking... Jeff, Trisha, here's a topic I'd love to see you dive deeper into. Yeah. Reach out to us. Let us know. Um, a lot of the ways in which the podcast has evolved is because listeners are saying, I'd love to hear more about this or I want to learn more about that. So please don't hesitate to give us feedback and to request a miniseries. We'd love to make one for our listeners. 
And Trisha likes cyber stalking guests. That's really what this is. Uh, is we have guests. I mean, we have some incredible guests on the podcast. I think every listener will uh, will tell you that you know just some of the people that you've been able to get access to uh, because you love cyber stalking them. And I love people love to share, right? People love to share. And so, yeah, if you have a mini series topic that you'd like us to dig into, uh, please let us know, and then we will let uh, Trisha the sleuth go find some incredible people to come on and share their experiences and share stories and, and, and some in depth looks into those mini series. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. I think that'll be a great thing to be thinking absolutely about. doing yeah. that research yeah. to find the guests that you want to hear from. Um, I wish that were my full time job. I love doing that. So, please do any requests you have <laughs> for the coming year, or if your PLC is going to be focused on something, uh, give us a little bit of lead time and we'd love to put something together for you and your school community. I love that. Well, thank you, Tricia, for sitting down and uh, recording this off the cuff episode. I know it was fun packed, uh, a lot of stuff. You're going to want to go over to, of course, shiftingschools.com. You can get everything from there. Also check the show notes of this episode uh, where we will have links to everything that we talked about as well. So Tricia, thank you so much for sitting down and doing an off the cuff episode. Really appreciate it. It's always great to, to hit the record My button. pleasure. Jeff, I'm realizing though we forgot to tell listeners, we talked about uh, Shifting Schools Camp multiple times. There's one other reason you might want to head over there, and that's because we have kept our Leading in the Era of Generative AI course free when you join camp. So um, again, if I totally forgot about that, that, that's another, I think, reason that many folks have made their way to that space. So if that intrigues you, our free course leading in the era of generative AI, you're going to find it at camp.shiftingschools.com. Awesome. Awesome. This is the problem. Too much stuff to share. We've just got to do these more often so we don't have to try to pack everything into an episode, but uh, we'll try and do that uh, in between our travels. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Until next time. We'll see you on the network.